What's going on guys? It's Nico's World here back with another Tekken 8 video and today we are going to get into some frame traps with uh, Lars Alexanderson. Now, <clears throat> um, as I said before, Lars is not a super heavy pressure character. He's not Dragunov, he's not Nina, he's not Huarang, he's not these characters that have crazy pressure, crazy frames. But he does have frame traps. So um, I'm just going to get into some of them. It's not a whole lot, mind you, but there are there. Um, and I'll show you right now. So let's do this. For the next battle. Okay. So um, a basic, basic, basic level one frame trap that, you, that large players should know is... Uh, uh, after this hell sweep, his down back four, um, it is absolutely your turn after this, after, if they eat this, uh, this low, and you're plus five, and it forces crouch on your opponent, and you're crouched as well. Meaning that, and, and, you know, some people have come to me and asked me, Nico, like, how do I check them after, after this, like, what's the go-to check? Your check to, che to keep your opponent in check after this low is this while crouching down forward two. And the reason why um, this this is one of Lars's basic level frame traps because you're plus five and your opponent's forced crouch and this move comes out in 15 frames. But since you're plus five, this technically comes out in 10 frames. Meaning that if they, the only thing that they can do to, um, the only thing that they could really do, and it, well, it would it would trade, is a dick jab. They would do this, but that's not going to be a good trade for them because, and let me show you why. Um, so let me let me just do this right here. So let me show you exactly what I mean. You see that? So you ate like, what? How much damage is that? Like five damage and your, the, your opponent just eats this. So that is how you check your opponent after down back uh, four, after this low. Down, his down back four sets up his down forward two. So what you wanna do after this low, hold down forward two um and uh another thing as i said before um this also sets up his wall standing two down and this will absolutely be anything that they do they can't they can't dick jab they can't it'll it's too fast um but if you want chunky damage and if your opponent has been pressing um after your uh on your down back four, check them with this. Um, so for example, right, you remember when I talked to you guys about taking information, absorbing information? So let's say that you want to do uh, a gimmick, right? So let's say you want to do this into this, right? So let's say that you, your opponent does that. Whoa, what just happened? He just, he just disrespected me, I'm, you know. So, when your opponent does anything, anything after this low, if you see them press anything, so like, let's say you do a gimmick, something that's not real, and you do this, but they press the button to stop you from doing that, that means that they never respected this low in the first place after they, eat, they uh, ate the hit. So, um, what that should tell you is that after they ate that low, they were like, nah, fuck that, I'm still pressing. So, how you should interpret that is, okay, so you're gonna press, you're gonna press on my frames. You're gonna, you're gonna press on my frames? Okay. After you do the low, stop them. So, how I, um, and I've talked to this about... I talked about the whole art of disrespecting and, and respecting your opponent. I talked about this with my friend. Um, it is not 
it, it, your opponent will make the choice to disrespect you or respect you. It's it, but it is your job as the player to make them respect you. So meaning that if you see anybody, anybody try to stop you after you do a gimmick or anything like that, that means that they didn't respect this in the first place. So you have to shut that down. So next time you put your opponent in that situation, kill them. Anytime you see them do something like that, stop them, shut that down. That's your job as the player to keep your opponent in check. You can't let people just press buttons whenever they feel like. If there's anything I learned in Tekken, not even Tekken 8, in Tekken in general, is that it's your job to keep your opponent in check. Your opponent is not gonna is not gonna keep himself in check. He doesn't have to respect you. You have to make him respect you. That's I, that's why I kind of like this animation when Lars like kind of just kind of snuffs you in the stomach. It's like don't fucking do anything. You know what I mean? So like after this, don't press. That's how you make somebody respect you after this low. So if you see somebody again. If you do this and you do some type of gimmick or something like that, and if they press the button after this low, check them with this the next time you put them in a situation. And that is one of Lars's most damaging counter hit launchers. I think this is easily like 80 damage. Something like that. I mean, I'm in rage, but. Um, it hurts. It's one of Lars's most damaging launchers. So this is one of his most basic frame traps. Down back four into down while crouching down forward two. Use that if your opponent is disrespecting you after this low. So that's uh, one frame trap that you could do. Um, another thing that you could do. Another frame trap of his. It's not the best frame trap, but I still I have gotten value out of this. It's his dynamic entry one. This is a high 11 frame elbow and it is plus one on block. So if they block this, it's technically your turn. Mind you that you're not super advantageous. You're only plus one. That is not very advantageous. Okay. So don't think that you can do something super slow, you know, whatever you want. Don't, don't think that you're only plus one one meaning that you only have a little bit of advantage not a whole lot so but mind you is that uh, um you know i'll let you know that i will say this plus one can turn into a plus eight a plus six it can turn into something you could turn your frames into something higher but uh what I've noticed is from, you know, what large players do sometimes is they do things that are not within these frames. So they'll do something like this into this, which is not smart. The reason why that's not smart is because you're only plus one. This comes out in 21 frames. So plus one, 21, that came out in 20 frames. That's way too slow. The be better way to check your opponent after this is a jab. A jab, maybe a dick jab, or his Lars's 2-1, because this elbow kind of sets up his 2-1, or his 1-4. His See what I mean? So, or, again, you're not that advantageous. It all, I mean, it could also set up his 1-1-1. Um, I wouldn't do that though. There's a better, there's better options like this. I would, I would, I would more personally like I would do something like this, something like that, or I would sidestep after this. So I would be like this, sidestep, something like that. You know. So uh, be careful with these, the numbers of like you know one twos. You're not super advantageous, right? So. Like example, even for this, which I use a shit ton. I use this move all the time. But mind you, you are not that plus on block. You're only plus three. So yes, it is your turn, but you're not super advantageous. 
because you're plus three, your fastest move from this stance is silent entry one, and that comes out in 12 frames. So 12 minus three is nine frames. So yeah, it'll be the jab, but they can absolutely power crush. They can still sidestep. They can still, there's, a, you're only plus three. So be careful on how you play with these frames. You know, so, but uh, that's a basic frame trap. Silent entry, or not silent entry, dynamic entry three into silent entry one. Dynamic entry three sets up his silent entry one. So that's a basic frame trap. Um, dynamic entry one sets up his his jab. His jabs extend his jab extensions. So you could do that. Um, so that's some things. But uh, again, Lars doesn't have super crazy frame trap advantage like that. You could um, another thing. And you've seen this in my videos, this right here. Um, while standing three, you definitely want to try to use this move. And the best way to apply this move, if uh, um, after like a low or something like that, once you have your opponent conditioned, you could probably pull this off. It's on the it's a little bit on the slower side. It's 20 frames and it is a high, but it's plus four. And it goes into limited entry stance if you hold down. And you could kind of just keep doing it. Um, so, meaning that uh, you're plus four, and limited entry stance. Each each move comes out in 16 frames. All right. So technically, these comes out this that comes out in 12 frames. So they can dick jab you out of that but um, they cannot jab you out of that because they, they would have to be a dick jab because if they try to jab you, both of these options crush highs. Everything from his LE stance crushes highs. The mid crushes highs and the low crushes highs, obviously, because it's a low. All right, so, but again, it's one of those things where you kind of need to be actively thinking because if you see your opponent dick jab, what you could do is you could put him in the same situation, sidestep, kill him. Or you could do this, into orbital, something like that, jump jump over the dick jab and kill him that way. And Lars' orbital is one of his most damaging normal hit launchers. Um, so that's one thing. Um, again, Silent Entry 2 is basically the same setup as Dimeback 4, except you're more advantageous. You're plus 6 on this. Meaning that you uh, and Silent Entry 2 sets up his while crouching down for 2. So, again, if you think people are going to press after this, hit them like that. His Hell Sweep, this right here, you're plus, you're really plus on hit if when you land this, right? You're plus 9. So, if you think somebody, if you think your opponent is going to press, your go to mid to keep them in check. This right here, dynamic entry two. And let me show you how this works. They can't press on that. They can't do anything. He's too, Lars is too advantageous uh, after this. So if they try to press after this hell sweep, Dynamic entry two is your is your uh, go to. Um, but I will say that uh, if they do block this, you're minus seven, so you're kind of giving up your turn after you. Not even kind of, you're giving up your turn after this. But it is safe. It is a safe mid check. Um, or you could do this into this. Uh, dynamic entry three. Uh, since he since Lars jumps over this, he crushes uh, dick jabs. So if they try to dick jab after this, if they try to do this, jump over them and punish them for that. But I will say, uh, you're only plus nine, and this comes out in 22 frames. So 
that comes out in 13 frames, which meaning that uh, you can get juggled out of this if they press. And let me show you what I mean. You see what I mean? So, there is a, some level of there is some level of risk to that. Just uh, keep that in mind. Um, but again, if your opponent, like, let's say you get juggled if they when they did that, right? They they you they you saw you put your opponent in uh, dynamic entry like this, you know, s setting them up like this, and um, they decided to jab at you. Meaning, again, that means that they did not respect this in the first place. They said, fuck your frames, fuck this guy, I'm pressing a button. You, as the player, need to let them know that, it, hey, it does not work like that. So if they disrespect you after this, if they disrespect you after this, if they disrespect you after this, remember that and kill them the next time they put you in that situation. Remember, this sets up this, this sets up this. This sets up this. Those are your go-to options to keep your opponent in check. They cannot do anything about this. They cannot do anything about that. They have to they have to respect that. The only there are there are some exceptions to the rule. Um, like for example, Yoshi, um, Xiao Yu. Um, Asuka, Jin. There's some characters that can wiggle their way out of these frame traps, unfortunately. That's when you're going to have to kind of adapt and think about your next, um, your next uh, game plan. Um, but uh, that's a time for another video. I'll get into that. Uh, I'll probably make some other guides about that specific situation. But uh, for right now, this is going to be about frame traps. Um, and uh, yeah, that's just about it. That is just about it. So uh, without further ado, thank you guys for watching. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Um, and uh, yeah, be on the lookout for more Lars level game play. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, peace.